thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what they are. They lick. Because through. someone told me on the. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that, but I remember they didn't tell us. They're fungal gnats, and they don't have uh, teeth, so they borrow well, I into the skull to bug through the trunk and then vomit that stomach acid into their skull. All right, slow down. They're fungal gnats. Record it. They have no teeth. They paralyze insects and like lick through their. Yeah, they burrow into their skulls or their tongues. Burrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they vomit their stomach acid into their heads, like into the. But what are they? What are they vomiting into? Into the skull, like the book. book. Like once they Another bore the hole oh into God. the book, yeah, they vomit their stomach acid into it to make it into content. Because <laughs> they've got no teeth, so they can't chew, and then they swallow it. And this then is the perfect. chemical reaction. I'm saying this to everyone. <laughs> She's gonna fucking love it. She's like, "Why wow, they're so beautiful? Why are they blue?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. fungal <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Kia ora, 
I'm sure that's a word you've heard more than once or twice this evening. Uh, be prepared to uh, hear it even more. It's uh, quite a, a simple way of just saying, hey, hi, how are you? Once the introduction, uh, the main part of the introduction has been accepted. Here we're going to introduce you to one of the most formidable art forms of our people we call Haka. Let's repeat this together. Haka! Haka. Now the Haka is a war dance. In our ancestors' time, it was used to prepare the warrior right before a battle. In fact, hoping uh, to prevent any battle between tribes and perhaps even allowing those facing the Haka to see, I think I'm going to go home today instead of fight to the death. Now, nine times out of ten, uh, unfortunately, all it did was have that very same effect. The battle then continued on to the death. But this evening, there's no dying tonight. <laughs> and the Chief Geese got some instructions to help us bring our haka to life. Would you step forward, please, Chief? And with a big, strong voice. Can I have all the men down here? <laughs> we'll form a single line either side of our Chief facing the audience. Really thinking. <laughs> Hands on hips, making sure you've got your elbow room between each other. Move to the side. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Now you're in the position and you're prepared now to complete a perfect haka. My brother and I will demonstrate the simple commands and actions, beginning with what we call really handshaking to the side like so. Now, in the Māori world, it simply means where there is movement, there is life. Mixed command looks and sounds like this. Starting off a more. Boom! Boom! On that very same command, you can see my brother and I have taken up the position and let out a good strong heat. That's exactly what you're going to do. On the command. Handshaking to the sides, here comes your command. Starting off a more. Boom! Beautiful. Stay there. Bring up the key. Tap your thighs. All together. All in my time. Wait, wait, look I hear ya. Stomp your right foot. Time. With the slapping of the thighs. This is where the action begins. Hit, hit, and bring it in for two. Hit, hit, and bring it in for two. One more time. Hit, hit, and bring it in for two. Leave those hands in front now. Clench your fist. For a right punch. In the left. And some easy time for five, four, three, two, one. I reach it under the left elbow with the right hand. I'm going to, like so, hands up to the trees, both hands to the left, to the right, to the left and right again. <laughs> then back under your elbow, back to the trees, back on the hips, and then out a good strong. Hey! Hey! Oh, one more command, repeat this one after me. Pukana! Pukana! This is the facial expression, the big eyes, the big tongue and the big noise from the pit of the stomach. Looking sound like this. Who can <laughs> On three, that's what you should look in sound like. Here we go, let's give that a go. One, two, three. Who can <laughs> Terribly good. <laughs> now you've perfectly memorized every command in your ship. Uh, the real trick now. Again, my brother and I will demonstrate, and fortunately for you, we'll do all the words. All you have to do is ensure that as the filming goes on, you're allowing yourself to go viral on YouTube. <laughs> Gentlemen, now the world is watching. It's up to you how you want to look. Let's take it from the top now. Handshake into the sides. Go with it. Remember, big strong. Hurry up, hurry up. Boom! Boom! No pucky. Nothing. I put the cocky. Nothing. Guys, big time. Who can I? Once again, uh, enjoy the rest of your time here with us. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. To the Maori warrior, and she's not a little Can you say Paya? 
Yeah. Similar to the three quarter eagle stuff, the difference was our lane systems. Never ever threw these types of weapons like a spear. Really because it represented their guardian, an ancestor of the individual that took the battlefield. So warfare, hand to hand combat was reality. Now, yes, it was a way of life for our people. Now, a few key features on the day of folks right at the bottom, you'll see the Upoko the here. As here at the top, no one is the only use to distract your opponent. Flip the range of body in a quick motion, catching your opponent's side for a split second would give the warrior enough time to move in with his most favourite strike. Leading down to the Matau, the face two eyes to the front, and also to the rear. Used for spiritual guidance to guide the warrior while he was out on the open battlefield. By leading down to the protruding tongue, or the other. <laughs> Now, the other one will tell you how you used to stab, thrust, and also to disembowel your opponent. Okay. <laughs> Moving up to the rapa on the body of the team, now this part's worse. Now, twisted and maneuvered around your body, also the most central part where you adore your blocking. Watch out! To the danger parts of the Taya Hawati, the sharp blades, sharpened on both sides of the whip. Used to bruise, to batter, to break, and also to decapitate your opponent. Donkey! Boom! Right at the tip, the other end of the button. This part's also used for thrusting. Some cases, thrusted into the chest of your opponent with enough force to could twist, opening up the ribcage, feasting on the heart while it was still beating. Nine times out of ten, struck to the crown of your opponent with a quick twist and a flick, removing the crown. Revealing the brain. It was a delicacy for our people in the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, please do not be alarmed. Right. Traditionally, that last part that you just witnessed, it was definitely optional for our people, but it wasn't an everyday thing for our people. You just never walked up to someone and nibbled on the arm if you felt like a snake. <laughs> But Yen never did something like that to make a very strong, a very bold statement to the enemy. If we meet each other in the battlefield, this could be the result for yourself, so choose your battles wisely. But don't worry, they eat McDonald's now. Now, before any battle ever took place, our ancestors would perform They do the haka. Can you say haka? <laughs> now, congratulations, gentlemen, for having to go up in our village. Well done. This is how it should be done. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the hut, you witness the pool color. Bulging of the eyes, feet of protrusion of the tongue, and the guttural sounds coming from the of the stomach. Now, our way sisters use the facial gesture of a set of defiance to intimidate the enemy. But more so in times of warfare, it was used to let the enemy know that if I get my hands on you, there is a chance you could end up in it. But sad to say, folks, the hut will be able to present. Here's the final item that we have to share with you this evening. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to see more? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're really convincing. <laughs> Would you like to see more? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Same time, same place, same price tomorrow. <laughs> but folks, hopefully you've captured just a little something about our people, our ancestors, ladies and gentlemen, our country. Take a home and share it with your loved ones. Encourage them to come to our beautiful country of all their own music. To our Bobby City of Rotorua. But more importantly, right here to Tamaki, Marvel Village, to meet them, the rest of our people. Travel safely throughout our country, do enjoy your meal. I'll leave you with a few words in our native language. Double up their money with you. That's what we can do when you can warn us. Translated, may the calm be worth free. And may the seas be in our country. Or may the shimmer of sunlight forever dance across each and every one of your pathways until we next meet again. Safety. No matter where you go, don't forget to use those two beautiful words. All blacks. <laughs> <laughs> Kill one.